Today, I have the privilege of being with Moises Zamora, who is the creator, co-showrunner, and executive producer for the upcoming Netflix series, Selena, the series. How are you doing, Moises? Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, so uh, this is such an iconic character. And looking back, I didn't even realize that it was already 25 years since the, the tragic death of, of Selena Quintanilla. What, why was this such an important story to, for you to tell now th this far in advance? Well, you know, um, I came into the project when that was already kind of part of the plan to be, you know, to uh, create a story, a series about inspired by their lives, uh, Selena and the Quintanilla family's life. Um, and so it wasn't like a choice. It was just one of those things where they were looking for a writer and uh, to bring this to light. And um, uh, at the time, I was coming off of a show, um, Star on Fox, uh, co-created by Lee Daniels. And, you know, it was a, it was a music-driven show. Um, and additionally, I also was trying to set up my own projects. Mm -hmm. um, and I had the, I still had the rights, I, but at the time I was just had acquired the rights to uh, the World Jungle Psychologist, who is this Mexican, a uh, 13 year old girl from Mexico City who is a genius and and I was trying to sort of set that project up and um, my former agency uh, CAA um, you know started seeing that I was uh, doing some of production work and trying to set projects up already on my own and trying to be a creator and uh, and they, they 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 made the meeting happen with the producers and um, I pitched them I really you know as soon as I found out it was about Selena Quintanilla and her family I did a lot of work. I prepared for it because it's just such an iconic sort of, you know, uh, story um, that um, I really, I put a lot of work into it and uh, pitched them the vision of the show. And I was attached to the project the next day. So that's how sort of it came about. Um, but, you know, um, if, you do get, if you look at it in a macro sort of uh, perspective of why this story couldn't come at a, uh, at a more perfect timing. It's, uh, Selena has left a legacy that is comparable. Like even though it's been 25 years after her passing, she's more relevant than ever. And she's a role model for a lot of young people that were born after the fact, especially young Latinas. And, you know, she's still like in the top, you know, billboard charts mm -hmm. with her music. So like everybody's still listening to her and we can't, we still can't get enough of her. And uh, being, you know, of Mexican American descent, in in this her story and the family story being a Mexican American, you know, um, story, but also an American dream. Um, it's I think, it's it's relevant now because it just shows that Latinos are part of the American fabric, and that our dreams matter, and that we contribute to to culture, that we've always contributed to culture in one way or another, and I think it to show her story and the family story in a in this kind of light it's it's important uh, politically culturally economically it's 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 what we need and 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 for that reason it's a um in the tone is inspiring and wholesome because uh, you know this is the kind of the story we want to tell and that, that we we deserve uh, to tell about the mexican american experience so you talked a little bit about how hard you work in putting this together. Uh, I'm really curious, how do, you, how do you write something like that? How do you prepare for something that's so personal for, for a family? Uh, especially one where they've, they've done, we've seen the 97 film, but now because you're, you have the opportunity of having um, in an episodic format, it's gonna get a lot deeper and more personal. How, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you do that? Well, I think it was very important to sort of like, you know, create a blueprint, just like an architect creates sort of like the blueprint for a house and uh, to show how it could look like, what the structure it's gonna be, what the journey, you know, we have plenty of episodes. So I really wanted to dive into the making of this superstar and the sort of the struggles of the family because I learned a lot already from the research that I had done about how they got started and the kind of gigs they were doing in the beginning and how that translated into creating this huge fan base. So for me, I was always very clear about 
what kind of stuff I wanted to show. You know, the early days, the very like South Texas stuff, San Antonio, the Hannah Music Awards, Laura Canales, like the stuff that was very present um, during that time when she hadn't yet hit those international charts. So I think that was it, that was important because it, it, it really tells, you know, um, it gives us a lot of clues on how she became a star, you know, and um, and additionally, when the when the family came on board, it was more about coloring those those anecdotes and 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 those you know moments, and they shared a lot of personal stuff and actual things that um, you're going to see on screen, you know, actual events, you know, that did really happen. This, you know, instead of with the peach cans, when you'll see it, that did happen, you know, and the making of certain mm. songs and the inspiration behind those songs, that did happen. And, um, and that just, just makes it even more, um, you know, special because uh, you're not only seeing the entire journey and a macro level, but you, you're getting that little, you know, moment that they, they, they endured and, you know, and how playful they were with each other. And, and it's a family, you know, with, you know, a bunch of kids on the bus on the road, you know, and all the shenanigans that, that entails, and um, and there was it, it was really wonderful to sort of be able to collaborate with the family that way because you know we couldn't have asked for a better kind of situation about telling the story because they shared so much with us, you know, like little writing from her journal entries that oh. to me was just like you know, wow, like there was one page that I always like mention, you know, that I got to see that it's not part of the museum. And it's just basically Selena practicing her signature. You know, <laughs> as a teenager, of course she would be practicing her signature. Who hasn't doodled and practiced their signature even <laughs> when you're not even trying to be famous? You know, it's just like, this is who I am. And, it's, and, and it just shows you that, you know, she was a teenager like all of us and she was trying to find her own identity in the most sort of like relatable way. So how, I don't want to spoil anything, but I thought that you had very clever ways of incorporating her music into certain scenes. There's this one particular scene, I'm just, I'm not gonna mention it, but it, it almost, it took my breath away at the way that um, two of the characters come together and then you get, you, you get a song that is actually not even pertaining to that, uh, that part of her life. But I, I thought it was so beautifully done and it's done in a couple of other ways throughout the series. Can you talk about how you, you know, chose the songs for the moments and, and how you balanced all that out? I think you're referring to episode five, correct? I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and I, I, I know the song that you're talking about. And actually, I have to give credit. I believe that was a Hiromi Kamata move, mm -hmm. the director of the series, because, um, you know, she is actually directing most of the episodes. Mm -hmm. So that was really wonderful for us to have that kind of consistency in, in directing vision. And um, and when we saw that sort of choice, of course, I, I kind of felt the same way because it doesn't happen anywhere else. Right. You know? it, it feels like, okay, everything's chronological except for this moment. And it's a perfect moment to put it, right? It's a perfect moment to put this song and to put this in this scene, in this, in, in this situation. And I thought that was a brilliant choice on her move. And so credit to her. And so I'm excited to, um, to be able to share that with the world and see how they react. But whole, I mean, you reacted positively yes. to it. So Fair that's good. It does take you out a little bit, but I think it's in a really, really good way. But it, it's, it's, it's uh, it really symbolizes the, the importance of that moment in her life which is I thought you guys highlighted very, very well. So, uh, I mean, th this series is, is done, it's fantastic. I, and then I had, to, I had to show it to my parents because they're, they're super critical about all things Selena because they're, they're a big part of their lives when they were in the 80s and 90s. And mm. they were glued on. As a matter of fact, I kept them up too late <laughs> watching a couple of the episodes. So congratulations on a fantastic series. Thank you. But also I hear that um, you're working on your own projects, uh, specifically zone one. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about that and, and what you're hoping to accomplish there? Yeah, I mean, I think the goal and it's something that, you know, I've been aware of for a long time and it's just sort of the lack of representation behind mm -hmm. it in front of the cameras, like Latinx represent authentic Latinx stories. And for me, you know, I'm Mexican American, I'm an immigrant, you know, and there's also like through my uncles and my aunts, there's like multi-generational Mexican American stories. Um, and, you know, it, 
to me, it's very, very important mm -hmm. to find um, more ways to tell our stories. You know, and we know it's a business. We know that the entertainment industry, like in Latinos are showing up, you know, to the movie theaters, you know, out over indexing any other group. And maybe that's why, you know, uh, no one is that excited to give us more stories because we're still showing up. <laughs> we like we like a good show, we like a, a good movie. Uh, but I think it's really, really important because it makes an impact, you know, the way that uh, Latinos are viewed in this country and, you know, Mexican Americans, um, you know, have been demonized and criminalized. Um, in, in the recent years. And so I think it's important to contribute to the culture in a more positive manner. And so learning from my experience from Selena and everything so far that I've learned in the industry, I found it, uh, uh, that almost like a mission to uh, create a production company that uh, tells authentic stories about people of indigenous, Afro-Latin and Latin American descent with global appeal. Because I also want to make sure that we make the case that our stories are universal, that the world, whole world could like relate to. And, um, and that's really important to me. And we have a couple of projects already set up where you know, we're in, in negotiations and hopefully we'll be able to share that with the world as soon as we close those deals. But you know, that effort of working really hard along with two uh, other executives, it's you know, paying off and there's, there's a need for it. And, um, and I just wanna be able to, to create more opportunities for for more Latinas, for more Latinas to be able to tell their, you know, their stories and uh, because it's important. I 100% support this decision. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always craving for more uh, Hispanic Latinos uh, in lead roles. I, I'm, I've always been uh, frustrated sometimes when you see them with the same stereotypes throughout the years, even sometimes in, in heroes and things like that. It's mm -hmm. not, you're, you're never, you're never the lead, but hearing that, you know, people like you who are, you know, bringing us to the forefront, I, I find uh, incredible and I am a total fan of. So we look forward to Thank you. Uh, supporting those, those uh, films, those productions in the future. Thank you. I'm, I'm very excited to be able to share upcoming projects and, you know, keep, the, keep doing the work, just doing the hard work, you know, building, making this opportunity happen, happen for ourselves. And I, and I think, if anything, that's what I learned. And, you know, Selena did the same thing. You know, that family, they created their own opportunities. They worked so hard. The doors were closed. They're like, doesn't matter. We'll write the song. Mm -hmm. Doors were closed. Doesn't matter. We'll release the album. And they kept at it and they kept at it. And they knew there was a fan base. There was a need for that kind of music. And that's how they really, you know, rose to the top and it created such an incredible following. And I'm, I'm t I, you know, I took some notes, you know? So uh, I, I am definitely, you know, gonna be that entrepreneur that Selena was and that Abraham was and, you know, apply it to my own life because I think it's, 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 it's more relevant than ever, you know, uh, that, that need, that gap. Yeah, the, the grit and that, and that stone cold Abraham with the same inspiration and the same heart as Selena, bring them together and you're going to be fine, which is, by the way, something that you guys do very well at, at showing throughout those episodes, the, just balancing out um, Ricardo Chavira's and Chris, Christian's uh, differences, but the same goal, but they're, they're arriving at it in different ways, but together. Mm -hmm. So uh, great job with that. Um, Thank you. Moses. Thank you so much for spending some time with me this afternoon. I really appreciate it. And thank you, uh, Manuel. Congratulations on part one of the series. And uh, everybody else can check it out next week, actually, December 4th on Netflix. Thank you. All right, take care.